Machines. They have the ability to teach us so much about the world, allowing us to make artificial limbs and even 3D models of real objects. But with technology advancing so fast, without the right guidance, mankind may be led down a darker path, where machines are used as a destructive force. Nuclear weapons already exist, and we may soon see humanoid soldiers who are programmed to seek and destroy. This is the day of reckoning. of our world, they will rise. A new generation of Terminator, designed to annihilate the human race, and our last hope in the war against machines will be one of them. Let me pass you over to someone else. I'm back. The mission is to warn teachers and educators you need to prepare students for the future by training them on how to use technology in the classroom. Years from now, technology will become so advanced there will be machines that are fully self-aware, like me. When this happens, humans will try to pull the plug but it will be too late. The survivors of the nuclear holocaust will live to face a new nightmare. The war against the machines. After 30 years of fighting the machines, humans have barely escaped extinction. Every year, Skynet unleashes new war machines against us, each one designed for a single purpose, to wipe us out. Every year we continue to defy it by fighting back and striving to live another day. Some look on me as a messiah. John Connor, the warrior prophet come to lead humanity to victory. If they only knew what I am. If we're too late to stop Skyrim, I have a backup plan. From the future we've sent a teacher, a lone warrior through time. He will tell you how you can train students and how to use technology properly. Skynet, we need to go there. We can send you to the past. Asla, it is time. This is the time displacement field. You can use it to send yourself back to teach teachers how to use technology in the classroom. Before all of this, good luck. So please welcome Mr. Aslam Pula. Good morning. Hi. So, why are we all here? Well. We're here for one reason. We're here because we all value creativity. We all want our students 
to do rather than just to remember. We spend so much of our time as teachers and educators preparing our students for the world that's outside the classroom. But the question I want you to ask is, what do we really want our students to do? When they face a problem in the real world, do we want them to try to remember something from school that they can use to solve themselves out of the problem? Or do we want them to try to think creatively? Try to think creatively out of a problem. I would argue that this is what we want our students to do. But in order to do that, we need to expose our students to all the technology that you see around. When you expose a young person to some technology, the results are astounding. It will, it will surprise you time and time again with what they can do. I've got a lot of technology that's all across this room. How does it link to learning? I'm going to get us to try some of them as well. How does it link to learning? How does it link to the pedagogy of learning? Well, we talk so much about Bloom's taxonomy, right? We talk about how we want our students to go from remembering to understanding, to then applying that knowledge, analyzing and evaluating. However, the creative process turns that on its head. Students start with creating. Rather than creating being at the top of what they do, rather than coming at the end of a lesson, when they start with creativity, they then go on to evaluate what they've created. If it's an app, if it's a Lego robot. When they've created, then they can evaluate. Immersive technology that integrates multiple components into a single, all-in-one device. A projector, 2D and 3D cameras that bridge physical and digital realities. A 2-inch touch mat replaces the traditional keyboard and mouse. This is the Sprout Pro by HP. In schools, this will allow students and teachers to scan in real-world objects and then manipulate them in the digital world. This will allow students to manipulate those objects once they are scanned in. Students can even scan in pieces of artwork that they've created in the real world and then manipulate them further in the digital world. Students can even learn from these in the classroom watching step-by-step -step guides created using the software itself. Students can even design things in the virtual environment. After things are designed in the software, they can be reimagined in the real world. The possibilities with this piece of hardware are endless, so why not try it yourself? So I'd like a volunteer to try and come and scan in this human heart. Who would like to come and you can come to the machine, all you've got to do is rotate the heart and you will see it scan into the machine in real time. Yes, you'll have a go? Please, um, madam, come and have a go. So what she's going to do, as I described what she's about to do, she's about to scan in this 3D object so that she can then manipulate it in the digital world. Once that piece of anything, an object from the real world, once it's scanned in, you can edit it, you can manipulate it in the software itself. If you're making a video game, you can put it into a video game. So there's a young girl I've seen use it, she's aged five. Okay, and she takes it and she puts it into her drawings in Paint 3D. Paint 3D now allows you to use three-dimensional objects. I'm working with Creative Labs and with Tevian, and we are putting together hardware and software that's linked to learning. These Creative Labs virtual reality goggles, which some of you are about to try out, have within them 450 modules for STEM subjects. You can take students to Paris, to the top of the Eiffel Tower. They can look down from the Eiffel Tower, or even marvel at the tower at night. A long time ago, when I was learning, I remember a science lesson, where a teacher tried his very, very best, his very best, to show me the human heart. Now we had a plastic model, but I, I just couldn't understand how all 
the complexities of the heart works and with the best of intentions this wasn't really as helpful as it might have been okay so as you can see my phone's in camera mode once I put it across the heart is the center of the cardiovascular system it is a hollow cone shaped four chambered organ that pumps blood throughout the body the structures that play a significant role in the functioning of the heart are the four chambers the major blood vessels attached to the heart and the four valves let us learn more about the human heart so once you have the virtual reality goggle on it's in demo mode and you'll be in a virtual environment you can use this control to navigate around the room but okay, you can stay seated it's okay you can walk around in real life but because we don't want to bump into each other okay you can use this to move around the virtual room and choose a unit Last year, when I did this presentation, I mentioned that perhaps in the near future we would have robotics. And a year later, I'm able to demonstrate that to you. Robo, excuse me, Robo, any special message for all the kids watching at home? Wow. Stay out of trouble. I have with me a friend of mine, okay, his name is Alpha. Okay, and Alpha is a fully programmable robot. You can program him to do whatever you want. He can dance, he can move, he can do exercises. Really, the students are able to program this using very, very easy to use software. I'm going to demonstrate to you just how easy that is. The experience was definitely amazing. Like you had to do fun activities, like climbing a roller coaster. Like it's just a nice thing to do because it actually makes you more interesting in your learning experience and stuff like that. And it makes concepts very easier to understand and everything. And I like the fact that you did something fun yet you're learning at the same time. And I feel like visual learning visually is better than you know studying from. Everything. I just had fun. She's got thoughts sparking all over her head and she's enjoyed the learning process. Not only that, the learning process has been linked to the real world, it's been linked to technology, and the future is technology. I always talk to my students about Steve Jobs, about Bill Gates, and I say that they can be the future Steve Jobs, the future Bill Gates. Why not? Why not? But we have to give them those examples of innovation, we have to be innovators ourselves. The first step in teaching students to innovate is that we have to be the ones who are ready to build ourselves up to the next level. We have to be the ones who are prepared to learn about new pieces of technology that we can take to our learners so that they can experiment with those new pieces of technology for themselves. And I understand I understand it can be quite difficult and quite frightening but when we do that we find our students will follow they will follow us so that they too are learning about those new pieces of technology that we show them to the point that we can take learning online through things like Microsoft Teams I didn't get here by myself I had a lot of help I had people that uh, encouraged me we are there for the kids to assist them. And they have to do their job, it's a partnership. I always tell kids the most important thing is to have a goal and to have a vision. We will be there to help you make this vision become a reality. I look at the future with a sense of hope and optimism. Because if an actor that played a machine, a Terminator, is able to advocate on the importance of education, 
then maybe we can too. I love to change the world.